You know, my brain is strange. I mean, it does all the things a brain is supposed to do, but it's like strangely tuned to remember pop culture and stray technical facts. For instance, did you know that in the Chippendales Rescue Rangers NES game, you can still see the Japanese characters in a US version? Seriously, spin up the ROM in your favorite emulator and check out the sprite table. Or that in Yo Noi, Goonies, and Star Tropics, the primary weapon is a yo yo? Or even that there's a reference to the Beatles song Yesterday in Earthbound. Man, I swear if my brain was just tuned a little to the left, I could be curing cancer for being string theory or something useful. But no, my brain dedicates space to remember each of the audio channels on the Nintendo Entertainment System. <sighs> ah, well, let's start the show. I just can't seem to grow up. I said I just can't seem to grow up. But you know what? What? I don't think I want All right, to. Follow me here. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh. Welcome to Retro Fun Time. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas. And finally, we're going to conclude our look at the Disney Afternoon Nintendo video games from Capcom. And we're going to conclude it with probably one of my favorite in the entire series. Starring, of course, the little rodents from the Disney Afternoon. That's right, people. It's time for ch 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 Dales Rescue Rangers for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Okay, let's play some ch 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 chip and dales Rescue Ranger ch ch chip and dales when there's danger. No, no, it never fails once they're involved. Somehow, whatever's wrong gets solved. I, I, you know, I don't remember what year it was. I remember I memorized that theme song as a kid. Uh, but I adore Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. It may, in fact, be my favorite Disney 80s cartoon. As much as I love DuckTales, as much as I enjoy a lot of them, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers is um, that cartoon that, like I said, that's stuck with me for years upon years upon years. Um, and, god damn it. <laughs> Here I am being nostalgic and I'm already dying. Uh, so let's actually go a little bit over this game before we start dumping into the nostalgia that is uh, Chippendales Rescue Rangers. Of course, Chippendales Rescue Rangers is a platformer. Uh, a lot of the Disney adventure games were. And, and as platformers go, it's actually kind of simple. Uh, you have a choice between either Chip or Dale, and I prefer to play Chip because, you know, who, uh, I wasn't the biggest Magnum P.I. guy, so I always enjoyed the Indiana Jones look with the fedora and the, um, the jacket. Uh, any case, uh, you are the Chipper Dale, and you have various things you can interact with the world with. Uh, you can pick up items and kill enemies with them by throwing at them. Or you can kind of do sort of duck maneuver, hide behind it, and sort of take a damage shot. Like, for example, I'll show you up here. Now, if you notice here, we have a bunch of crates that are kind of spattered around. They all do different, you know, they all kind of have one use purpose, so you just throw them or duck onto them. Uh, there's also some other hidden things in the world, too. For example, we have Zipper there, who is providing some invincibility for a bit. Usually the big crates in the world represent um, either uh, event-based um, items, such as a zipper or something like that, or some type of uh, puzzle solving thing. They're really kind of simple. Anyways, if you notice those crates are one time use, we can also have these other items that are multiple time use. Um, these are mainly used to actually traverse some of the world. As you notice, we really get shocked by that. And, um, also hidden on these crates are these flower points. Uh, I forgot what they do. I think it's more for either score or for the um, the bonus portion at the end of it all. Uh, as you notice, I and also picked up an acorn that represents a piece of, sort of life. You notice I have three hearts here uh, and such. You also can stack items together to kind of jump around and, and do sort of different things. Um, that, to be honest, in terms of platformers, it's a very solid one. You know, whenever you'll be in, down, you jump down, so it's very responsive. Uh, items can be picked up. Um, so everything kind of has a, like I said, it has a really solid feel. Um, and you can knock out your friends too yourself. 
Uh, this, this game can also be played co-op as well. Uh, you have the choice to play with two players, with both Chip and Dale. Uh, but obviously you can also play single player too. Um, worlds are very expansive. They obviously are very much to scale. Um, as you can see, I don't know how they have the small crates. That's big, but you know, who knows? Maybe. Hey, look, it, it's it's Nintendo era. You gotta be a little bit. Um, now you've got to question everything we're talking about. Uh, any case, uh, there's also some other kind of interesting things to do. For example, you know, like stack two things up there and jump down. Um, but it's not the most complex of. Uh, you know, um, platformer, uh, but it's solid. It's it's definitely a, a you know solid thing. Controls responsive, all that fun jazz, and everything that seems to go within. Uh... Well, isn't that funny? <laughs> uh, like I said, there's some event-based ones, like for example, Monterey Jack opening up a little thing before the boss here. And there we go, dying. So let's beat this boss really quick, and we'll talk more about this game. Me to actually, be, god damn it! I am not remember. My younger self would be insulting me. There we go. Now, if you now for those who can't tell, because I know a lot of you guys may have may or may or may not have played or actually something, uh, watched Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, the cartoon show. Uh, but a lot of the enemies are based on actual enemies or devices in the uh, cartoon show. Uh, anyways, here's a bunch of There's one up. Of course, we have also our, our our normal enemies as well. We've got Mr. Fat Cat here uh, telling us they kidnapped Gadget, which is terrible. Gadgets are cute little mouse girl. Uh, anyways, the cool thing about uh, Chip and Dale's Rescue Ranger is you actually had a choice a little bit of how your adventure would carry on. Um, we're going to go to A for now. Uh, but you actually could choose between different levels and, and kind of figure out your path, uh, which is a bit unique. Um, Again, um, big giant crates usually represent uh, some type of item. Uh, they, they vary. Like I said, it can be anything. Um, but let's get back to a little bit of nostalgia because ultimately we're playing these games because of the fact that the Disney afternoon was such a big deal. Um, I this was not necessarily Capcom's first um, foray in Disney. Now it was Ducktales. Uh, I think technically um, there was a, a game that they developed with. Hudson Soft as well, uh, but this was sure as hell the most iconic ones, uh, especially during the Nintendo era. I don't think I knew a kid with this grain of salt that didn't um, at least know of this game. Uh, of course, we all knew about the cartoon show, so. Uh, <laughs> oh, the Nintendo blinking. I might be going that someday in the future. But yeah, when it, this game is, like I said, one of those sort of strange games with me because it's, like I said, it's a sol it is a very solid game, uh, which is really unusual, uh, only because most of the, um, games that have a property associated with usually have a, a, a harder time of being a iconic. Uh, this didn't though. Um, anyways, let's go back to the bonus level. <laughs> really, flowers? Mother pus bucket. So as you notice, she said there's different zones we can go. Now, like I said, there is different ways we could have progressed to the level. We, we took A for no apparent reason. A was sort of not needed. Uh, we could have just gone B, D, F, or whatever. Uh, but anyway, the cool thing was it, about this is that it kind of let you pick your sort of adventure how you wanted to go. Uh, so we have C or B to go to. Now, Gadget said there's some pipes in C or B and zipper in but B. Let's go with C. Let's do C. C is fun. Ooh, I don't think I've actually played C before. Um, one other thing I'd like to comment on that I always seem to comment on is the sound. Uh, okay, uh, is the soundtrack. Uh, I 
Um... Damn it. There you go. Um... Definitely Capcom did a great job in the soundtrack in this game, and it's... I forgot who composed it exactly. I remember it was one of the better composers in the, uh... the lineup, so to speak. Uh... It's, it's really hard to talk about this game and play it. I know because... It's not because it's an intense game. It's a very simple game. It's not too hard. It's just it's such a weird thing because like my brain is is okay. I see. So the flowers uh, you have the uh, pretty much are similar to coins in um, you know any other platformer. Get a hundred, get a one off up here, that kind of thing. God damn it. Um, there's a couple other things you can do. Uh, for example, you get select. You can see how many flowers you've got. How many stars you've collected, how many players you have left, aka one up, you know, guys left, so to speak. Um, this game has some bugs, though. As you can see, we're walking through flowers quite literally. Uh, I think it has, I'm, I'm guessing it has to do something with the sprite count. Or where you hit it. Um, so the hit detection is a bit off. Um, heck, no game's perfect. Um, Mainly because a lot of times, you know, we as modern gamers have the advantage of the internet uh, and things like patches. Whereas during, you know, the times of, of this, uh, God, patches would have been a. Uh, God damn it. That's also one thing you gotta note. Uh, if the world disappears underneath you uh, like that, you will die. Um, Anyway, back to discussion here. Uh, I guess it's a very weird game. It's definitely... Um, I realize I'm not even saying any facts about it. I guess the Chippendales Rescue Rangers, let's just get to the chase here. Um, it's a very strange thing to have a property game be as good as this. Uh, that we are actually out of time for gameplay right now. I just looked at the clock. We are well over time here. So we're going to take a quick break here uh, and play us a little bit of Chip and Nails Rescue Rangers Part 2 when we come back. But in the meantime, why don't you guys watch this in-depth video starting our, I think, four-part series is going to be analyzing the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's October 1985. AHA's Take On Me is hitting the charts, the Free Software Foundation is founded, and the Nintendo Entertainment System is released in the U.S. market. The Famicom was released previously in 1983 and was a big hit in Japan, but console gaming in the States was a bit rocky, experiencing a crash in 1983. So when Nintendo planned to release a version of the Famicom in the North American market, they had to do some drastic things in order for retailers to sell the system. For starters, the physical design on both systems were drastically different. Not only did the NES adopt a gray and black palette, but also a front-loading design as opposed to a traditional top-loading. Nintendo did this in order to make the system less like a video game console. Heck, even the name was different. Nintendo Entertainment System. With accessories like the Zapper and Rob, Nintendo positioned the console more like a toy. Another change in the Japanese market was that of cartridge manufacturing and anti-piracy mechanisms. To avoid some of the issues Atari suffered from poor quality games, Nintendo not only limited the amount of games a developer could produce with the system, but also limited who could manufacture the games. They also implemented the 10 NES authentication chip to make sure each game sold for the Nintendo was genuine. These two issues would be point of contention with some developers and would spawn companies like Tengen to get around the lockout or other creative solutions such as Konami creating Ultra. Though with these restrictions, the NES would go on to sell 61.91 million units through its 20-year retail cycle. In our next part, we'll look into the cartridge design and memory mappers. Okay, time for some Chippendales Rescue Rangers 2. Now, the funny part about this is I didn't actually play this on the original console uh, when it first came out. Uh, this came out very late in the Nintendo cycle. It also came out very late in the Disney Afternoon cycle. In fact, when this came out, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers wasn't even part of the D Disney Afternoon anymore. It was out of the lineup, so it's strange to see this game when it came out in terms of timing. So. Um, it's very weird. Uh, much like the first game, you can pick, play as either Chip or Dale. So let's, since we played as Chip earlier, let's play a little bit of Dale action. Um, it's definitely got a lot more animation to it, a lot more cutscenes to it. Definitely, uh, about this time, um, I don't know what, what, I don't know what other Capcom games were out officially. 
But you know, it's very apparent they've gone through a couple cycles and they've no they've learned a lot about how the Nintendo works and how to develop for it. For example, you've got Chip there, a bunch of other things going on. Let's just skip that and play the game. Uh, as you notice, we are now Dale. Dale, of course, very traditionally um, wears the kind of a Hawaiian shirt. Almost reminds me of like uh, I remember he was apparently uh, modeled after Magnum PI. But he definitely has a, you know, if I look, you do some modern connotations. Uh, he definitely has a uh, wash appeal. Uh, much like last time, we had the select menu there, uh, sort of our pause menu. Uh, they replaced the flowers with Rescue Ranger symbols, uh, but we still have our crates. Uh, the only really, really new mechanic is the kind of uh, throw mechanic, where if you notice, I walk up here, I'll, I'll demonstrate. Uh, I can't really demonstrate with this beat. Uh, I'll dump up here. So if you notice, uh, if you give a little bit of a running start, you have a little bit of charge going on. For example, watch this. And you kind of have a bit more heft to it. It's a weird mechanic because I've never, I don't think it is really that usable. Uh, but it is interesting to add it. I, I, I'd first thought, to be honest, that it was like a, a Mega Man thing where you held in charge and I kept seeing it and kind of, um, you know, kind of pop up. And I was like, how did that happen? Uh, then after repeated use, I just learned it was a, uh, you know, run and place kind of thing. Um, which, I don't know if I like it as much as that. Um, God damn it. Um, the real big difference between, um, between this and the other one, I think this is a lot more linear. Uh, you don't have the same kind of, um, Choose uh, level kind of choosing mechanics you would that you did in the first one, uh, which is kind of disappointing because I was kind of hoping that um, you know Nintendo would have kept going, not Nintendo, uh, Capcom would have kept going with that uh, and and figured out a way to kind of work in that. Um, God, that's the one thing I always hate about these games: the fact that um, you cannot um, you have to like end the level at a very specific spot. Um, but yeah, this is the weird one because I, I did not figure, um, at all, uh, that Nintendo, that, that they released this, like, way mid-cycle. Cool thing is you can pick up the enemies and took awesome. That's kind of different. Uh, also, things in crates are kind of annoying, but I do like, again, it's, it's, they they've, they varied up some things. They definitely changed certain mechanics up, but... They didn't, they, I guess they kept the core, they did a good job, oh god damn it, your mother, your mother, that's where your mother is, um, your mother is a classy lady, uh, if you notice there's certain items that were up there we, that we could not reach on our own, uh, a lot of those items can be reached in co-op, uh, that of course you can in there toss people, um, and kind of have fun with that. So, I mean, ultimately, what made these games really good, both of the two, uh, is simply the fact that they were just really solid platformers. Um, and they happen to be part of, you know, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Um, you know, solid platforming. Um, uh-oh, stuck. Oh, event item. Oh, how am I gonna... Oh, hey, Zipper. Oh. I wonder what happens if I got stuck there. I bet you I'd die. Monterey Jack, healing it up. Right before boss. Alright. Let's play the bomb stuff. God damn it. <laughs> well, this is this is going this is this is going smoothly. Get up here. There we go. God damn it. Right as I was just getting through. Uh, there's a couple of uh, graphical improvements in the second one for sure. Uh, I've noticed um, that that they've they've definitely got the palette down a lot more palette memory than they did before, which I'm I'm trying to figure out how that works out in in memory. 
Um, but I guess it does, and they're just you know smart about how they manage their pallets. Let's get a new game over scene too. Um, let's continue. Do you have to go back to the beginning of the level? Son of a bitch. Well, we might just only see one level here because we are almost uh, a little bit out of time. Let's see if I can beat this boss at least. Um, ultimately, though, if you to be honest, as much as this is a kind of a uh, little bit of a graphical improvement, if you played the first one, and enjoyed it, you'll pretty much enjoy the second one, and it's 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 almost the same game, which isn't bad. But I mean, compared to what we did with Ducktales. Uh, you know, adding different, you know, weapons and items to the mechanics and things like that. This is almost kind of a... It almost feels like a little bit of a cash... It's a little bit of a cash grab. Not a whole lot of one, because it still has some some charm to it, and it's still, it still is a, you know, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers, but... I, I, I'm i still wondering who who this game was, even, even during the year it was released, because I, I can't quite figure it out. Anyways, we are out of time for gameplay, so when we return, I will tell you my final summation on both Chippendales 1 and 2, and my take on all the Disney afternoon related video games we looked on during this series. So what's my final take on Chippendales Rescue Rangers for the NES? After all these years, it's still a solid platformer. Though the second game didn't do anything terribly new in terms of the original mechanic, it's still a pretty solid and fun game. The graphics are improved and the music is top notch. Both games showcase the power that is the Capcom game designer. Both are platformers worth playing. But what about the Disney Afternoon series of games as a whole? What can we learn from them? The big takeaway is how to do a licensed game correctly. Don't base it on a time-sensitive property. Most licensed games will create a game to tie in with an upcoming movie. This leads to a rushed development time and forces studios to recycle or poorly mimic other game franchises. However, if you make sure to treat the property with respect, you can not only produce a more faithful representation of the property, but also a better game. Great modern examples of this are Telltale's Back to the Future series and Rocksteady Studios' Batman Arkham Asylum. In this fast-paced media world, game development can fall by the wayside. But when it doesn't, and you have a team dedicated to the project, great things can happen. Coming up next time, we're still on the couch playing some more Nintendo games. Thanks for watching this week's show. Of course, you can catch all the previous episodes and join in on discussion at our website, cosmogreer.tv slash retrofuntime. And make sure to follow us on Twitter, at retrofuntime. Let us know how the hell we're doing. That's all we have for today, so tune in next time. But remember, it ain't art, unless we prove it to be. Take care.